Hello and welcome. This is World of Wastewater. This is part 9 of a series going over a wastewater exam, which you can find a link to in the description below. If you're following along, these questions are numbers 41 through 45. If you're looking forward to that sweet, sweet pay bump once you pass your operator exam, hit that like button and subscribe. With that said, let's get started. The oxidation of ammonia to nitrate by biological means is called A. Nitrogen cycle B. Denitrification C. Nitrification D. Nitrosomonas The answer is C. Nitrification on screen is a general overview of the nitrification process, which starts with ammonia. When ammonia comes into contact with water that has a pH of less than 9, which is often the case, the majority of ammonia turns into ammonium. This is what we're dealing with at the treatment plant. The conversion of ammonia or ammonium takes place in an aeration tank. For this to occur, there needs to be a dissolved oxygen level of above 3 mg per liter, ample alkalinity, a pH above 6.7, and the water should be on the warmer side with an optimal temperature being around 30 degrees Celsius. A couple other factors such as MCRT and CBOD play a role as well. The two key bacteria for you to know are Nitrosomonas and Nitrobacter. In the first stage of the nitrification process, Nitrosomonas oxidizes ammonia or ammonium into the nitrite ion. Once this is complete, Nitrobacter will oxidize the nitrite ions into nitrate ions, completing the nitrification cycle. There's a lot more that can be said about the nitrification process that you should be aware of for your exam. In the description, I've placed a link to a good video that goes into this concept further. Which of the following is not a type of odor control? A. Diatomaceous earth B. Ozone C. Hydrogen peroxide D. Odor removal tower scrubber The answer is A, diatomaceous earth. This question isn't about diatomaceous earth, it's about being able to recognize common ways to treat odors. Activated carbon and liquid scrubber towers are very common at treatment plants. Chemical additions such as hydrogen peroxide and chlorine, as well as ozone gas, can be used to control odors at pump stations. What is the purpose of diffused air in an aerated grit chamber? A, control odors. B. Reduce the amount of air needed for activated sludge treatment. C. Allow heavier grit particles to settle while keeping light organic particles in suspension. Or D. Start the decomposition of microorganisms. The answer is C allow heavier grit particles to settle while keeping light organic particles in suspension. Aerated grit chambers are effective at slowing the velocity of water and allowing grit entering a treatment plant to settle out before damaging downstream equipment and processes. The air diffusers are set up perpendicularly to the direction that influent enters the chamber. This creates a helical pattern as displayed in the picture on the right. The goal of this is to reduce the velocity of water to one foot per second or slower. I've highlighted one foot per second in green because that's an important measurement to understand and is frequently asked about on exams. Sludge should be deposited in gravity drying beds at a depth not greater than A, 12 to 15 inches, B, 2 to 4 inches, C, 18 to 20 inches, D, 8 to 12 inches. The answer is D, 8 to 12 inches. Sludge drying beds provide the simplest method of dewatering. A digested sludge slurry is spread on an open bed of sand and gravel and allowed to remain until dry. Drying takes place by a combination of evaporation and gravity drainage through the sand and gravel. The excess water is collected in a pipe underneath the bed and returned to the influent of the plant for treatment. The answer 8 to 12 inches is a general rule and is determined by the plant permit and design. On the light spectrum scale, 244 nanometers are A. Gamma rays B. X-rays C. Ultraviolet rays D. Infrared rays
The answer is C, ultraviolet rays. Ultraviolet light has a wavelength between 10 to 400 nanometers. This might seem like a weird question on a wastewater exam, but UV disinfection systems are becoming increasingly more common in our industry. UV light also has laboratory applications in both bacteriology and spectroscopy. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then check out the others on this channel. If you want to help us make more great content for operators, there's a link to the World of Wastewater PayPal in the description. See you next time on World of Wastewater.